Ya. Good evening, everyone. If you make a start, uh, it's just after six o'clock. So, uh, welcome everyone to this meeting. It is a public meeting, and a warm welcome to you all. Um, we've got a varied agenda. Um, I'm Alan Hooper. I'm Councillor Alan Hooper. I'm chair of the local area committee for the north. Before uh, I ask other councillors to introduce themselves, I'm going to ask Philippa, our clerk, just to give some housekeeping arrangements for you. Thank you. Thank you, Philippa. Thank you, Chair. Before we start, there are just a few housekeeping arrangements to mention. Please can I request that mobile telephones and other such equipment are switched to silent so as not to disturb the conduct of the meeting. There is no fire test planned for today, 
If there is an emergency evacuation, please take instruction from the council staff present. The assembly point is in the yard at the back of the building here, which you can access through the emergency exits. The, um, the toilets are situated, there's a disabled toilet through that door, the other toilets are through these doors, round the corner to the right and right to the end of the corridor on the right. The meeting today is open to the public and will be streamed live and for subsequent broadcast via the Council's website. You should be aware that the Council is a data controller under the Data Protection Act. Data collected during this webcast will be retained in accordance with the Council's published policy. By entering the meeting room, you are consenting to be filmed and to the possible use of those images and sound recordings for webcasting. Thank you. Thank you, Philippa. Can I now ask the councillors to introduce themselves, starting with Richard? Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Richard Williams. I'm Council for Stannington Ward. I'm Anne Whitaker. I'm Councillor for West Ecclesfield Ward. Hi, I'm Craig Gamble Pugh. I'm a Labour councillor here in East Ecclesfield Ward. It's really good to be here on, our, on home turf. We've worked really hard to actually have one of these meetings in Ecclesfield for some time, so glad to be here. Thanks, Councillor Mike Leavery, West Ecclesfield Ward. Good evening, Councillor Vicky Priestley, Deputy Chair in Stannington Ward. Councillor Penny Baker, Stannington Ward. Evening, Councillor Lewis Shinchen, Soxbridge and Upper Don Ward. Councillor Victoria Dowling, Soxbridge. Good evening, my name is Dave Luck. I'm the Community Services Manager for the North, supporting your councillors. Carl here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Carl? Just introduce yourself, please. Sorry, yeah. Um, I can't move it. I'm ahead of the circle. Thank you, Al. Thank you. Before we proceed with the agenda, I'd just like to explain how the meeting will work. Uh, we will deal with the formal part of the business first, with apologies, declarations, and minutes of the last meeting. And then we'll go on to public questions, uh, followed by uh, hearing from the Parish Council reps, representatives. We will then have a budget update from Dave, our area manager. And finally, we have a number of updates on the agenda, which include the Sheffield Youth Cabinet, who are with us tonight, and welcome, and High Green Development Trust, and it's Chris there from High Green. Thank you. Apologies for absence, Philippa. We have apologies from Councillor Julie Grocott. Thank you very much. Item number three is exclusion of the press and public, and there are no items that require the exclusion of the press and public this evening. Item number four is declarations of interest. Do any members wish to declare any, an interest in any of the items of business on the agenda? Is there anything that you need to declare, councillors? Take that as a no, Philippa, please. Thank you. We'll now move on to item five, which is minutes of the previous meeting. Um, they're on the document pack. Um, I'll go through them page by page. I'm going to find them. Yeah. So page, page, it's page nine on the agenda. Uh, minutes of previous meeting they, this was held on the 3rd of March sorry yep and the 18th of May which were agreed we looked at the North Area Committee Action Plan and we we'll move around to page 10 page 11 we had an update from the Stocksbridge Town Funds update page 12 and page 13. Page 13 was the public questions and petitions. There were a number of questions. The first one was by, it says Emma Collings, but it's actually Emma 
Mayne Waring from Ecclesfield Parish Council regarding the issues around Lound School. Um, do you want to say something about that, Councillor Woodcock? Where we've got with that? Yeah, Lound School now have a um, crossing person, I'm not called a lollipop person, they now have in, in place a crossing person and uh, barriers, a 14 metre barrier went up. If anybody knows the school, it's up the hill from Chapel Town, it's just past the 14 metre barriers going up there. I spoke to them today and they've actually said that it's made a, a hell of a difference. So things will work there. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, we had two more questions from Adam Hurst. One was regarding issues at Stain Drop Lodge Hotel, and the other was an issue around uh, Mortimley Close, which were dealt with on the night. Uh, the final question, I believe, was from uh, a resident of High Green, who uh, asked quite a while ago for um, a barrier, stroke gate, on Jeffcott Road uh, from Mortimley Park. It took hell of a a long time to do but it's finally been done uh, to the satisfaction of him and, and other residents so it was, it was a, a, a gate uh, that comes from the park and, but at that particular point the path meets Jeffcott Road, there's no footpath it was quite dangerous if children were coming out of the park there so we, we put a barrier gate to actually slow children down and stop them running straight into the road Sorry. Transport question which has been yeah. escalated. And the final question was a um, transport question uh, regarding buses, which has, 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 got, has gone on uh, and, and actually the situation has worsened. It was about the 135 bus uh, and uh, travelling from Grenaside into Hillsborough. Uh, they reduced the weekend services in, I believe, in August. Saturday and Sunday service 135 was reduced just to a Monday to Friday and as from last weekend uh, the service has been withdrawn totally uh, from High Green uh, into Sheffield via Greenwich, Burn Cross, Greenside and uh, Upperthorpe. So that's gone all together. But uh, there's also various other bus changes and reductions in services, especially at weekends. For our area as well, we've lost the 35A, which ran from Chapel Town up to uh, Nether Lane and to the industrial estate there. And there's been some various uh, reductions and changes uh, to the 57 service, mm -hmm. uh, I believe, over the hill uh, at Stockbridge. Partly replaced, is that, is that right? My 57A. 57A, thank you very much. But uh, it's an ongoing and situation. Partly the uh, situation has not been helped by... Uh, a real reduction uh, and trying to get bus drivers from first mainline. Apparently there are some 50 odd drivers short uh, and that makes it really difficult for them to cover the services both at uh, early morning and evenings. Uh, and then there's a reduction in um, companies actually tendering for non-profitable services. We have formally referred things on. Yeah. It, it has been referred to the um, South Yorkshire Mayor uh, and our own Transport Regeneration and Climate Policy Committee. Sorry, sorry, yes, sir. The, the, the 135 yet yeah, has ceased, has ceased altogether from high green. Um, through, through, through to Burn Cross. Uh, Radfield. Radfield, that's 50, 57. No, that's 61 and 62. 61. Do you, do you want to, I, I'm, I'm not sure of the details. 61 and 62 has had its house cut and it isn't running on at Sunday. You're quite right, sir. But the, 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 30, the, the, the 135A uh, used to run from Sheffield through Hillsborough. Um, inch change up through Fox Hill, etc. Et yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Perhaps, 
perhaps one of the councillors can talk to you after the meeting to yeah. explain if that's possible. Are we all okay with the minutes? Can we agree them, please? Yeah. Thank you. Now we move on to item six, which is public questions and petitions. Is there any petitions or is there any questions from members of the public? Yeah, could you come to the microphone, please, sir? Oops. Careful. Careful. We have two, two questions that's written questions, which uh, we'll read them out afterwards. Right. My name is Leroy Wenham, and um, I'm attending on behalf of the um, Caribbean Sports Club, which is located on the common in Ecclesfield. Um, we have just been awarded um, a tree of trees from the Queen's Jubilee, and that was announced on Monday. And one of the things, one of the questions I would like to ask is if we can rely on the ongoing support of um, councillors here in the planting and development of that tree, which we have to plant in the near future. That's one. And secondly, if we can be agended um, to give a small presentation um, to the area group at your next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Again, you know, we, we, as I said, we have been here for, for, in the area for over 35 years and um, we see ourselves as part of the ongoing development of the area and certainly having been presented with that tree should bring a level of um, prestige into the area and I would, you know, want to see that we have ongoing support um, for that development. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you very much. The next, our next meeting will be at Stannington. Uh, so it's, it's quite a way. Yeah, okay. no, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you're most welcome to, to present. I know, know from uh, experience that uh, you have been supported by, by, by local councillors yes. uh, with, with your projects. And I don't know if Councillor Bowden wants to, to say anything regarding that. Um, well, all I can say is that I, uh, I attended the... Uh, uh, what was it, what, the sports day or what, what was the special yeah. name? This, yeah, it was a fun day. Yes, it was a very, yes, it was a very hot day. Oh, and hot. I did talk to a few people there and, and uh, they said they were hoping to develop, you know, to, to actually um, expand in various ways. So yes, I, think so. I think it's, I think it would be re really interesting to hear yeah. a I mean, presentation the, from you. Yes, I mean, the facility is well used. Yes. And one of the things we would actually like to do is to actually, you know, have a proposal a proper pavilion mm -hmm. uh, yeah. um, and we're looking at ways in which we can actually develop that facility. Again, it's used um, you know, by a lot of local people as well. Yeah, yeah I've just been informed that our next meeting is in Stannington in yes. January, but we also have another meeting uh, in West Ecclesfield, which will be quite nearer and easier for us to get to, probably we could use that, yeah, whichever that meeting for, 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 your, for your purposes. Yeah, yes. thank you. Okay, thank you very so, much. Thank, thank you for coming. Thank you for your question. Congratulate them mm -hmm. on, on achievement. It's a major achievement. And bring something special into the area. So thank you very much indeed and congratulations. Thank you. Philip, have you got the two written questions? Thank you. Yeah, we've been sent in uh, two questions from the same person. Um, I'll read them out. I am unable to attend this meeting, but would like the following questions to be raised and answered. I noticed a speed detection device in Ecclesfield. On which dates will this device be active? And where, when and where will the results of the data be available to residents? Also, how will the North Local Area Committee make use of these results to ensure it is a viable operation? 
So, um, we've the North Committee have for each ward a vehicle activated sign. Um, we will place them in what we believe initially to be the locations which are most benefit for, for the areas. Uh, we've had the first round and they've been there for some six to eight weeks and moved on now to the second round. So they will move around into six various locations on each ward. So that through the four wards will give us 24 locations for these signs. They, as you're approaching them, they will give you a, a lighting up sign uh, indicating your speed. But it also uh, gathers information of speed and uh, I believe number of vehicles that are passing in that particular location. So the devices for me will be active as and when they're sighted and be active until they're removed. So it will be an ongoing 24 hour, seven days a week operation of being, being active. Uh, and as regards the results of the data, uh, they hopefully will be gathered and this is across the city as well. So each, each ward of the 28 wards have got a vehicle activated sign. There are 28 signs in place and the data will be gathered. Uh, and then we can look at that uh, and ensure that uh, if it is speed in traffic, we can, we can act on it uh, and look at the volumes as well, I believe, which will indicate where, where traffic flows are. I don't know whether any other councillors want to add to that. Okay, so we will provide this, uh, this person with the relative information and hopefully um, that will, will satisfy. We've currently got, quite locally, uh, two. Um, one certainly is on Wheel Lane as you're coming from Greneside down the hill uh, and it's just past Creswick, Creswick Lane there as you're coming down towards Ecclesfield. And there should be another one actually sighted on Town End Road. Uh, we've come down tonight uh, we haven't seen it certainly on the, the downward but uh, it may be uh, going up from Ecclesfield into Grenisside ok everyone yep. thank you very much sorry yeah so uh, got Representatives from Ecclesfield Parish Council, so Councillor Whitaker. Yeah, please, yeah. You can follow her on, Dave, to see what's missed. Okay. Right, uh, Tim Whitaker, Ecclesfield Parish Council. Uh, the first thing, we've been having a school uniform swap shop. Uh, this has been going on for a, a couple of years now. Uh, we've had 567 items handed out since the end of July, and this is for the local schools. Uh, quite a bit of uniform was given to the asylum seekers from Stain Drop because they were sort of landed here and had no school uniform, and school uniform was, was provided for them. Uh, we held a community skip day on Angram Bank at the top of the park. Uh, this was really successful. We had a very large walk-in skip. Uh, we got lots of people coming with, with the rubbish, and we actually went out and helped people carry, carry rubbish in. Uh, I was seen walking across Angram Bank Park carrying a bath. Uh, <laughs> which, well, it had been in their front garden for a long time, so they were happy to get rid of it. Uh, so, and I think it really went well. We are planning another one in, in Chapel Town fa fairly soon as well. So, uh, um, I mean, I think we can all appreciate that we've, we've got stuff at home that we're meaning to get rid of. Uh, and sometimes we can't get it in our car to go to the, to, to the tip, or we might not have a car. And uh, it, it worked really well. Uh, we run in a gardening competition. This has uh, been started again. It, it came to halt over COVID, but it was run last year, and it's been running today. Uh, and I think at our council meeting tomorrow, we're giving the 
awards out to, uh, to, the, to the winners. Uh, the community room refurbishment, which is the building next to the council offices, uh, this is just about finished. It's just waiting to be signed off. Uh, it's looking very nice. There's a little kitchen area. Uh, it's wheelchair friendly. Uh, we all had a, a Macmillan coffee morning there a week ago on Saturday and lots of people who used to use it came and had a look. So hopefully they'll come back and start using the uh, community room again. Uh, We've uh, implemented four walking information posts around the, the parish uh, and this gives information to, uh, about lo local walks of interest around, around the area. Uh, so hopefully we're going to get people you know, doing a bit of exercise and walking around and seeing what a lovely area we do live in. Uh, we've been involved in uh, meals for the isolated and hampers uh, for the vulnerable. Uh, this is working alongside Chapel Green Community Hub. Uh, I can't say too much more about that because I haven't been involved in it, but uh, obviously it's, it's, a, it's a very good, uh, good thing to do. Uh, there's been some new notice boards uh, put out around the parish. These are ones that give local information. Obviously they don't last forever, so some new boards have been bought and place, put in place. And we, we hosted a successful trip for some Ukrainian residents uh, to go to Chatsworth House. Uh, so that was another a good thing. Dave, is there anything you want to come and say? Right. I'll, I'll hand over to Dave. Thanks, Tim. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I think it's all right. Hi, I'm Dave Ogle, Councillor, Parish, High Green Ward. Uh, two uh, interesting things. Update on the community boxing gym I'm trying to get built. It's going through the planning process, has been now for about, I think it's four months. Uh, we should get an answer before Christmas. I'm hoping for an answer on planning permission being granted this month. But I'm forever the optimist. Uh, it could be a community gym um, and the aim being to reduce crime and antisocial behaviour. So there will be updates on that and there is information on it on Facebook. Second is the Parish Council agreed to fund, park fund, um, a project again to reduce crime and antisocial behaviour which will be based around motocross. Um, I'm being given permission, along with the clerk of the parish council, to apply for grants um, because we need more money than the parish can put in, but the parish has been really good in what it's, it's putting in on an annual basis. Um, and I've sent off quite a lot of grant forms and anybody who knows any grant um, funding pots that revolve around crime and antisocial behaviour prevention, um, please feel free to get in touch with me via the Parish Council. So those are the two really good things that are going through. The Parish has been, the Exfield Parish Council has been excellent at supporting both. Um, and I'll keep you updated as uh, these things roll on a bit slowly, but they roll on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. Moving uh, very swiftly through the agenda, uh, I'd like to now uh, introduce and welcome um, Louise from uh, the Youth Worker Youth and uh, members of the Sheffield Youth Cabinet and the local members representing the north of Sheffield. And it's a really big and warm welcome to you. Could you come to the front and just where the mic is and then introduce yourselves, please? Do you want to fetch the two young people with you? I'm a bit shy. They don't want yeah. to come? Okay. I'm, I'm going to introduce them. If you could introduce yeah, them, yes please. Introduce them, yeah. Yes please, thank you. 
So I'm Emma Hinchliff, I'm the Young People's Involvement Lead based in Community Youth Services in, in Sheffield City Council. Um, so for those of you that don't know Community Youth Services, as a service we provide a variety of different things including um, youth work provision for young people, careers advice and guidance for young people that are not in education, employment or training or have got special education lead provision one-to-one -one support through community youth teams um, and the sexual exploitation service for young people that might be at risk of engagement in criminal activity or need additional support, um, as well as youth voice. Um, so I'm here tonight from the Young People's Involvement team to talk about the work of the Youth Cabinet and, and what we're doing around trying to get young people a voice within the city. Uh, so there is a, a little presentation. So in terms of um, young people's voice, it's about meaningfully listening to young people, working with young people to empower them and give them the skills and, and the knowledge that they need to be able to go out there and influence decision making, not just locally but also regionally and nationally so they've got a voice and, and can really influence change right up to the national agenda as well. We've got lots of different links into different avenues at, at citywide level, at regional level and at national level so that they can have that power and that influence. In terms of our youth cabinet work, these young people are elected in once every two years and we've aligned them this time round to the local area committee. So we've got five young people elected in, in terms of each of the local area committee areas and they're elected in once every two years. So they've just had an election this February. Um, so quite a lot of the young people are, are, are quite new. We only had two or three that we stood from the previous cabinet. So um, they, they've only been in post about six months. Um, and what they do is they, um, as a group, decide on some citywide priorities but, uh, and then in their local areas pick up a local priority that they're passionate about. Um, they work with decision makers but also they develop their own projects based on issues that they're passionate about and that they feel really need to be changed. So it's not just trying to influence, it's also then creating and developing that change themselves and feeling really empowered to lead the projects that they want to lead upon. In terms of the structure, the structure is just there on the screen. Um, so the way that it works is we've got youth councillors. So these um, youth councillors are equivalent to local councillors and then we have got UK youth parliament so depending on the size of your um, youth population in, in the whole of your area dictates how many young people we get in UK youth parliament um, so nationally they've said that we've got around 52,000 young people aged 11 to 18 in Sheffield and so we're entitled to three members of UK youth parliament um, what we do, because we realise that young people have a lot of pressures on them with, with education and, and life and things like that, is we also have deputies, so that should that young person not be able to get involved or attend things, the deputy is there to be able to attend that provision. Um, in terms of priorities, they have one national priority that comes from a big, some of you may be aware of um, a ballot called Make Your Mark, so it's a big national ballot of young people up and down the country and what they do is they get a list of um, up to 10 key issues. So it might be crime, it might be housing, it might be homelessness, it might be safety. Lots of different issues go on that ballot depending on the young people that have been elected in and what their manifestos said. Um, and then those ballots go out to schools and youth venues within each area of the country. Um, and young people vote on what they think is the top issue that needs to be addressed in that year. Um, so that ballot happened in February this year and the issue that came out top was health and wellbeing. Um, now that's quite a broad topic so what's happening with that is there's just been some surveys done um, and some focus groups with young people to find out what area of health and wellbeing matters most to them. And the next stage with this is that on the 4th of November, our members of UK Youth Parliament will be debating with the others up and down the country in the House of Parliament to decide what is the key area under health and wellbeing that we take forward over the next year. 
in terms of citywide priorities, the young people picked three this time round. So reforming the curriculum, so young people felt that their curriculum weren't really inclusive um, and didn't provide the support and the guidance that they needed to be able to um, make the transition to adulthood and, and things like that. So that they picked that as a priority. The work that they've, they did a survey with young people just before the schools broke up and from that survey they have identified um, that young people want more inclusive sex and relationship education um, around the LGBTQ community and, and kind of that sort of agenda and that um, young people want more awareness around different hidden disabilities and how they can support their peers that might be in that situation or peers that might be young carers looking after family members that might have a hidden disability. The second issue that they picked was um, greater well-being. Um, so the focus of that primarily at the moment has shifted towards what support schools provide because what they've realised is from talking to each other that no school's the same in what support they provide to young people in terms of health and well-being. Some schools have got counselling services, some schools have got mentors, other schools do lessons on the topic, other schools have drop-down days. There's no consistency, so depending on what area you're from depends on what support you're able to access. Um, so they've just done a survey with young people and got around 400 responses, um, which they thought were, were quite good. And what they want to do is to, to try and make that campaign successful, they want to link into um, what provision schools ordinarily provide in terms of extracurricular activities around sports and stuff and the links into mental health around that sort of agenda where schools are doing education around drugs they want to put a mental health spin on that so that it's something that's more likely to succeed in schools rather than developing a resource that because we know schools are stretched in terms of capacity and things so they want to be able to make it a success and then the last one is around votes at 16 this campaign nationally has been going on for a long time. Um, people that have been following it will be well aware. Um, and nationally we work really closely with the British Youth Council um, and they've just partnered this year with Body Shop to try and get Verts at 16 pushed through nationally to do a big massive campaign. Locally, um, from, from the young people having conversations, what they've found is that actually um, for a lot of young people, if you say politics, it's something that doesn't interest them. They don't necessarily connect politics with what's going off in their day-to-day -day life. So what the young people want to do is create some sort of resource that can raise young people's awareness of what politics actually is and that actually every day you are engaging in politics without realising it and that, so that they can encourage their peers to get involved in, in politics and influencing decisions and then maybe push, um, get involved in the national campaign to push the votes at 16. Locally, we had a big discussion with the young people that have been elected in locally around what they felt was the key issues for young people, and they identified several issues, but the one that they thought was the most important to them was environmental-based issues, um, and initially their focus has gone to um, the recycling agenda and actually what, what can they do to encourage their schools to recycle more, to encourage the peers to recycle more. Because <coughs> we're aware that previously, pre-COVID, that there were people going into schools to educate young people around recycling and what bins were for what and stuff. But none of the young people that were elected into this area have had any of that information through their schools. Um, so they wanted to make sure that that was something that were picked up. That's the youth cabinet. We've got two of the young people here tonight. So we've got Isabel and Mitch at the back there. Guys, do you want to give us a wave? Just so that we can see who you are. <laughs> so Isabel and Mitch are both from this area um, and really wanted to make sure that young people had a voice and so um, they have been getting involved in quite a lot of stuff. I think Isabel's passion is around votes at 16 um, and Mitchell, yours is around the reform in the curriculum stuff, isn't it? Um, so they've both come at it with different passions and different agendas and the other, the, the other young people that couldn't make it here tonight are from, from the other wards in the area as well and, and um, have all got different passions and interests as to what got them involved and why. So our, our contact details are up there. If you want to specifically reach out to the Youth Cabinet, we've got um, a, an email address for the Youth Cabinet 
I'm Emma Ass, Portland, Sarah Stevens is my manager, and um, it's not just your cabinet we do, we've got other opportunities, um, so if you, if you know any young people that might want to get involved in having a voice and influenced in decision making in their city, or are really passionate about a particular issue and want to do a social action project around it, get in touch with us and, and we can look at how we can support those young people to get involved because we're aware it's not just us as a service that provide youth voice opportunities in this city as well there's lots of other agencies that do it and wherever possible we link our young people into those agencies and those services as well so that we can join up and make sure that youth voice is amplified uh, Emma just, just stay there thank, thank you very much and thanks to the two young people. Thank you for coming, really, really good. Does any other councillors want to ask anything or comment? Richard? I'm sure they will be. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Really interesting. And thanks to you to the back, who I can't actually see, but thanks for coming this evening. Um, obviously, you mentioned that one of the key concerns was the environment. But uh, the question I have. Do, maybe through yourself, is um, do you feel safe in your day-to-day -day life? So one of the other groups that we do is um, we do an advisory group to South Yorkshire Police that's specifically for young people. So they have an adult IAG, but we run the young people's one to make sure that young people can influence um, decision-making and basically have an opportunity to say to the police, this is what issues affect us and this is what you need to be thinking about. And one of the things that's been brought up there is safety, particularly for women and girls um, around sexual harassment and catcalling. And so we've been working with that group around um, developing a film to go out to the schools and the youth venues around um, sexual harassment so that we can start those conversations with young people. And we're actually doing, um, between our team and the youth work team, in, in half term, we're doing an event for young people around safety issues. Can I ask a supplement on that, please, Chair? Um, are you, I'm sure you are, familiar with the Dark Nights project? Uh, I don't want to put you on the spot, but it's such an interesting project. Are you able to just share some thoughts with the people here? I'm going to actually invite up Louise Ellison at this point, because Louise Ellison manages the youth work team and actually wrote the Dark Nights plan for our service. Um, so I think Louise would be great at kind of just touching on that and what the plans are. Thank you, Louise. <laughs> Thank you. I won't hear because Sarah's off. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I live in the area, so that helps. Yes. Have you got a specific question about the Dark Nights? Oh, I just I think it's such an interesting project that oh. I think you'd be. I'm sure the people here would be interested to. If you can just give. I'm really sorry for putting you on. Oh, the it's spot. absolutely fine. You know, it, it's what I live and breathe at the moment. Um, but yeah, so the Dark Night period usually runs from around the 10th of October to the middle of November, and traditionally it's. Um, you know, working with the uh, local partner agencies, voluntary faith sector groups, uh, South Yorkshire Police, uh, South Yorkshire Fire and Rescue Service, youth work, and, and you know, Sheffield City Council youth workers, and we look at um, trying to reduce antisocial behaviour because it's a peak time. Um, with, with the uh, antisocial behaviour stats across the city. Uh, there's lots of incidents of firework misuse, uh, fire misuse. Uh, so we do a multitude of different activities around. We're working with South Yorkshire Fire and Rescue who are coming to deliver education sessions into youth provision. They're also going out to all the primary schools as well, which is that, 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 you know, what they, their offer is normally. Um, we've got um, lots of different activities. We've got additional uh, detached provision across all the key areas and there's some additional detached across um, <coughs> Stannington, High Green and Chapel Town over the, over the period um, and there's some work going on at the moment as well to develop more provision in, in the north area as you're probably all, all aware. Um, it falls between the half, half term period um, so there's lots of different uh, additional activities so we've got um, ice skating, Ninja Warrior and um, York Dungeons as a diversionary activities for young people. Um, we're supporting community bonfires, um, 
supporting community sector faith groups to deliver youth clubs on bonfire night. Um, so we've got one at, one at Sharrow, uh, one on the Manor, and hopefully one at Longley Fall Greens. Um, and I know Simon, who was the full-time youth worker for the North North East Black Areas, uh, he, we've been speaking today about him uh, looking at uh, possible building building youth in Stannington to start um, a youth club in, in there in the coming weeks. So. Um, yeah, we do joint patrols with the police as well, so uh, from a, a youth work perspective it's all about we do the engagement side with young people, the informal education side uh, and supporting young people and then after a certain time the, uh, the police then will look at the enforcement element of it and if we get any young people that get stopped by the police um, they get issued with what's called a CJU 10 which is a community resolution uh, and then they're diverted to our community youth team um, which will offer one-to-one -one or group sessions around antisocial behaviour, consequences and victim awareness, etc. I think, I think that's everything. I waffled on. I do waffle on. And from, an, from a young people's involvement perspective, oh, yeah. we're also that. working closely with the police around um, test purchasing operations for fireworks, for um, alcohol and, and, thing, and knives and stuff, so that we can try and kind of nip, that, nip some of that in the board around how people are obtaining fireworks and things. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, thanks for that presentation and for coming along. I mean, I, the, when I hear that young people are saying that they want to campaign for the voting age to be reduced to 16, that's absolute. That's music to my ears. Because one thing that I get really sick of is people telling me that young people aren't interested and don't want to be able to, or that aren't capable of making those decisions. I think that's absolute nonsense. In my experience, when I'm knocking on doors talking to people, if you get the if you get the kids and the young people come to the door, they're they usually really happy to chat and engage. Like has been said in the presentation, party politics switches pe a lot of people off, and that's not just young people, but people do understand politics, the political issues that affect them in their daily lives. So um, I know that some colleagues of mine just went, um, it may have been early this week or late last week, to Bradfield School uh, and did, did a presentation and taught to some of the students there as part of the citizenship programme and you know I th I'm sure that all of us here from all the different political parties that are represented here would, would very much welcome any invites from any of the schools to go along uh, and have a chat about what we do and how people can get involved. I'm really proud that as far as so we, ought to, we ought to have it here. I think by the time you've denied people that vote until they get to 18 um, I think that's, that's one of the key bits that disengages people. By the time, by the time a lot of people are old enough to vote They've got too many things to worry about and they're already brassed off with it. Um, so I would just say, please, please, please invite us to come and speak uh, in, in schools and, and colleges. I'm sure we'd be only too happy to. And the other thing I want to say on that, the priority of recycling. Obviously, um, in the city at the minute, we've got a trial of uh, food waste, doorstep um, food waste recycling as part of a government, um, new change in government policy. And, um, and we, we lobbied really hard to get uh, Ecclesfield and Chapeltown to be one of the areas that's included in that trial. Um, so I'd really like to hear from people. It doesn't cover where I live in, the, in my part of Ecclesfield, but I'd really like to hear from people who are part of the areas where that trial is running, how that's working, because I think we really need to push for that to be rolled out across, across the city permanently. Um, and if we can get young people behind that, we need to keep up the pressure. It took a lot of pressure to get that. I'll, I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. And thank you for the work you're doing with our young people. It matters a lot. I know we're quite frightening, sat here behind the table, but as individuals, we're not. And over the years, one of the things I've done is I've had people who've been doing work experience at that time come and shadow me and work with me and see what I do. We try and mix set up meetings amongst that time so they can get the link with officers and, and hear and see what a local councillor would do. I know some of our MPs do it, but it's a bit difficult because of our distance away from Parliament. But they could, you know, come to the um, parliamentarian's office and experience it there. Um, my own granddaughter came with me when she was doing work experience. Um, I even took her to a medieval barn that was threatened. But, you know, we, we could do some very strange things that you'd never imagine we did. 
And it really matters to us that the younger people of the society know that we're not just sitting around at meetings, talking and, uh, at each other or other people. So I think any, any of us would do it. It would depend what the young person is interested in, um, who you'd link them with, because it had to be a person that would expand their interest. Uh, the same granddaughter had a uh, 18th birthday and um, she um, did a theme of uh, you came as your, the person you admired the most. Um, and we came, we had some really quite extraordinary fancy dress, we even had somebody coming dressed in as Jesus. But uh, I got dressed as a suffragette and I carried a banner that said boats for women. And uh, during the night, whilst we were talking to the young people, we added to the bottom of that banner, and 16-year-olds. So I can tell you very clearly that a lot of us totally support that idea. I'm really pleased that you've taken that on board as well, so that soon you might be sitting on this side of the table and not over there. But thank you ever so much. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Emma, for coming down and, and presenting. Um, I think this is a really good move to move out of the town hall, presenting to scrutiny committees about what you're up to, and actually into the community where it matters, and aligning yourself to the local area committee. And I think we should uh, develop this in a big way, particularly in the north, so that we do get engagement. We do start to look at the youth issues, which was very difficult in. Uh, a large committee environment in the town hall, but much less so now you're out here. So congratulations and well done. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to support what Craig had said. I also went along to Bradfield School and was grilled by a group of uh, Year 7s who had actually been in secondary school for five weeks. Um, my greatest fear before, before going in was that we'd run out of steam after about 10 minutes. But the session was 55 minutes, and at 55 minutes, the teacher had to say, that's no more questions. Um, and the range of questions was fantastic. It ranged from local things like fly tipping, even buses. Children are interested in buses, especially in Stannington and Worrell. Um, but also, one young girl struck me. She asked me, did, she, did I think British troops would have to go and fight in Ukraine? And is there going to be a third world war? I thought for a 12-year-old, that's quite profound. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Richard. Anyone else? Van? At my first introduction to the Youth Council was when two members of the Youth Council came along to a committee that I was on um, for... Um, Children fam and Families Committee, Education, Children and Families, and uh, there were two very eloquent um, young people who gave an amazing talk um, on, on what was happening for them, and it was after the pandemic and how it affected them. They were from different schools, from different parts of the city. Uh, really, really interesting. Um, and then my, my second delve into it was when I had the honour of going along to the election um, which was at Bramall Lane, uh, where everybody was elected, uh, spoke to lots of young people and amazed, well, and delighted that we've got such wonderful young people in our communities. Uh, and I think uh, they, they, they're doing an amazing job, and I think it's really good that we, we have them, and, and it's really good that you are coming out to talk to us and going to committees and talk, and, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Um, we've got a guest tonight. Uh, we've got leader of the Sheffield City Council, Councillor Terry Fox. Terry, would you just like to come and say a little bit for the young people in the Youth Cabinet before I just conclude this part of the meeting? Thank you. I, I hope you've come, Terry, especially for this, this part of the, the meeting. <laughs> I, I, well, I have in, in some respects because, obviously, um, as Emma and Louise will know, and, and I, young people I came to see when, when we'd just been elected we, with Anne at, at Bramall Lane, and then I went out to the first meeting at Dern Valley when we were out at Dern Valley on 
Friday night actually to, to, to introduce because the fantastic variety and passion and enthusiasm uh, of our young people just absolutely fires me up. Uh, but also to see those people that had lost elections and for somebody who's won an election, lost an election, you know, you, you get your ups, you get your downs. Uh, but to see how they bounce back and, and their uh, um, issues. And so I've, I've come out tonight not, not only to see the presentation, I'm, I'm doing a round of all the lights because I came out with yourself, Chair, and other members in wards on walkabouts and, and other parties to, to come round, round, round the lights and to, to, to see the public and, and other. But on behalf of Emma and Louise, who, who you've just heard tonight with, with, with the Dark Nights, and, and Emma with, with, with our uh, youth services, it's just a fantastic real opportunity, I think, that, that, that reinvestment in our youth. And, and the way that they're, they're repaying that, and as, as Richard said, to the, the wealth of, of knowledge that, that comes from them, and I've kind of challenged them that they don't know this yet. I, I've, we're, we're going through some policy developments as councillors, um, and so my challenge is to the youth cabinet to see where they get to with the same evidence that we have, with the same information we have, and see whether we line up at the end of this, and it'll be quite interesting to see whether that policy developments with themselves and bearing in mind that uh, well-being is, is a real big issue and I know um, there's a number um, of, of the youth coming who have really got that in, involved so uh, we'll, be, we'll be rolling that out, we'll be challenging councillors as well in committees to see whether we can mirror that uh, and see whether they align on, 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 on the issue and one of the main real issues that Craig really raised was about recycling and, and, and environment because that is a real passion in, in, in the youth cabinet when I heard them speak so uh, thanks Chair and thanks for giving me this opportunity I weren't, I was coming to listen um, I've got big ears so I'm coming to listen to, to, the, to the public and to yourselves Chair but uh, uh, to our staff who've come over and, as well and our investment is, is fantastic so thank you Chair and thanks for the committee thank to you. give a chance to speak Thank you, Th thank you sir, yeah. so, so to conclude um, it's quite good that uh, the youth cabinet and the youth in the north uh, actually marry our like priorities uh, with young people uh, and recycling. Uh, we are very lucky to have the food trial uh, recycling. Uh, people I've spoke to welcome it. It's still in its infancy. Uh, there's things to do but people welcome it and we have I think to do it as a city by 2024-25 so we're on the way but I think it's really good that, that your issues and objectives meet ours in, in the north um, I would like to certainly congratulate uh, Mitch and Alison for actually standing in the first place and then getting elected and, uh, along with all the people that, that were elected it's not easy and it's, it's a big commitment to think about what you do it's a big commitment for adults or for younger people it's, it's, it's really sick. And I think I'd like to congratulate you. And can we give a, a round of applause? Please? <laughs> so it's a sincere, sincere thank you from, from me and, and, and the rest of the councillors. I would also say that when you have your, your youth council meetings, especially if they're in the north, uh, I'm sure quite a few of us would like to come along and listen to what's happening. Uh, and also from uh, uh, both at Ecclesfield School yeah. if when you have your youth council meetings certainly send an invite out to us and we'll come and, and listen in and join in with you but thank you once again I think it's been really useful for your coming really useful for, for you probably to look at us and us to look at you but congratulations and thank you very much thank you uh, we've messed the agenda about it, or I have. <laughs> so we'll move by now to, the, uh, to Dave Luck and uh, the, the plan and update of uh, where we are with the spend. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Chair. So we just do have a few slides just to give you a bit of an update on where we are with the Area Committee's uh, budget for the year. So the Area Committee has a £100,000 um, budget for projects in line with its community plan. I would add some of you may be aware that we also have a ward pot. So if you have groups that are looking to do specific activities, um, that's separate to that and there is still money in those ward pots. And there is another funding stream that I'll mention at the end that I think our, our colleague from the Caribbean Club may, may also be interested in. So we, we have three priorities we identified this year that's around transport and highways, environment and community life. So this £100,000 budget is there for us to do things uh, in line with that. 
Um, as you'll see in the minutes, we approved two things uh, last time. We approved the Parks Improvements Budget uh, and uh, a youth club starting at High Green. Chris, who's going to speak to us in a minute, will be able to tell us about the youth club that we started at High Green. In terms of the Parks Improvement Budget, we identified three particular sites. Luke's here from Grenaside Park, which is one of the areas that we're looking at. Um, we're about to start work at Wadsley Park Village, uh, sorting out their football pitch. And also, we're developing some work up at Fox Glen in Deep Car. So, that's where we got to already. We're going to have the next slide. Thank you. When we had our very first LAC meeting, which was back last September, um, to, to make work practical throughout the year, there was an agreement that if there were projects that cost under £5,000, um, they could be agreed in consultation with uh, Alan, the LAC chair, but that those projects needed to be reported back here. So what I want to do this time is do that kind of report back on some of the things that we've spent below that £5,000 threshold that has to come to a formal meeting. What we expect to do next time in January is we'll have some probably some bigger projects, but also a bit more reporting back. So today I just want to tell you, uh, next slide please, these are some very practical things that we've done in terms of our community plan, um, just to make you aware of. So in terms of the category of community support, um, we've supported again the Development Trust at High Green with some summer activities for young people. And we've also um, put some money to support young families of asylum seekers, who many of you will be aware um, have been placed at Stainedrop Lodge in the area. In terms of antisocial behaviour, I should say anti rather than ant, that's an interesting typo. Um, there's a number of things that we've agreed to do uh, working alongside our local police teams. Um, the first is uh, we had a request for two additional police bikes. Now, one of the things that we're told very often is people want to see more police presence. Um, they want to see police out and about, and these bikes mean that the police are able to get around the areas much more. Um, we also had a request from one of the teams for a, a device called a tint man. Now, this is fascinating, something I didn't know about before, that if you see people driving around with heavily tinted windows, and you're, you might think if you're being cynical, what are they hiding? Well, um, the police, through this device, are able to stop people um, and check that the, the tinting on their windows is within a legal limit. Um, and whilst doing that, if there are things that shouldn't be going on, for which there are tinted windows, they're obviously able to have a conversation and take action. Um, we were also asked by the, the team covering Stannington and Stocksbridge, very practically, for some throw ropes, so that if somebody gets in a bit of bother in one of our lovely reservoirs and they're a, a asked to attend, they've got a throw rope they can throw in. If you talk to our police sergeant for Stannington and Stocksbridge, he will tell you his favourite story about some men from Barnsley who got into one of our reservoirs with an inflatable, um, I think it was a, um, possibly a pelican or uh, something like that, and uh, they had to go and help them out. So those three rooms will help them that time. Um, and we've also agreed to have some off-road bike signs. Um, what, what these do is that if somebody is uh, riding around on an illegal bike, um, the sign that we place in places like parks functions as a warning. And what that means is that if police then get intelligence, they're able to impound that bike because the sign has functioned as, as them having a, a legal first warning. Uh, in terms of highways, some very practical things. Councillor Woodcock has already spoken about the barrier at Land uh, Primary School, which, which has been erected. We paid for a very narrowing sign at Grenaside, and also we've commissioned a speed survey at Warncliffe side. Uh, so there's some very practical measures. And in addition to that, we've agreed to replace some litter bins, and we have an operations budget, which allows us to do things like uh, pay the school for allowing us to use that hall tonight. So very practical measures. The only other item that I do want to mention is we have an additional budget of £10,000 for uh, additional youth activities. And so we've literally launched that fund this week, uh, and that will be open through October for bids of up to £1,500. So be really keen to talk to anybody who might have an idea, might be involved in a group or a project that they think um, that we can support through that, and we'll, we'll give them all the details. So that's a quick rundown, Chair. Very happy to take any questions in detail. Any questions from...
much, Dave. Um, move on to the uh, last agenda item, which is the High Green Development Trust, and uh, call upon Chris Allen to come and give us some details of what you're doing and where we're going. Thank you. Oh, I'll just press the red button, that's nice and simple. Um, thank you for the opportunity to talk to everybody here. My name's Chris Hallam, I'm the Chief Executive of High Green Development Trust. I don't know what councils know about High Green Development Trust, but I'm pretty sure you will have all heard something about High Green Development Trust in the past. Um, we, are, we have about 35,000 square foot of space up at High Green, um, and that is occupied currently by... 13 different charities and used by 35 different community groups. We have everything from a 10 bed respite care nursing home, we have an adult hydrotherapy pool, we have uh, ball pools for adult um, therapy for adults and, and young people with very severe um, motor skill uh, issues. We've got um, a charity shop, we have um, a community fridge which is raging success on a Saturday morning. We've got 35, 36 volunteers as of this morning. I inducted a volunteer this morning ranging from 16 and a half years old to 84 years old. So for the last 12 months, which is the, the, really the period I've been there, we've been trying to change the organisation from being inward looking and based around just the people that were on the site to being outward looking. My charitable aims um, talk about Burncross Ecclesfield, Grenaside, Chapel Town, High Green and the surrounding areas. So that's quite a lot. Um, we're doing whatever we can to try and partner with organisations that meet the, the three core aims that we have, which is care, education and community. We've built a community plan around that, which I've shared with the City Council. So I thought it would be a great opportunity just to come and... Um, may take some questions from people, talk about the things that we're doing uh, on the site. We line up very nicely with the LAX um, priorities. We have a, you, you, you will see that you very kindly supported us with setting up a youth um, hub. It's a, much more than a youth club. You'd be pleased to know that most of that £11,300 we haven't spent and we don't intend to. Actually, we intend our young people that come to the youth club to spend it. They will tell us what activities and events they think they want to do and the Youth Voice will run those activities. Louise and I have already met and talked about how important that is. I am reverse mentored by a 16-year-old and a 17-year-old uh, twice a month. Um, there's nothing freshens up your diary and your approach to work like being told by to a 16-year-old and a 17-year-old how you need to do your job differently. It's been a joy. And um, I think I'm learning more from them than they're learning from me, but I'm trying to get back on the front foot and teach them some stuff. But at the minute, it's just flowing my way. I think that's, I think that's great. Um, the intention for that particular activity um, with, with the youth is that we will, we will allow the young people to decide not only what they do, but how they reach out across the north of the city. So we know that they've already talked about potentially going and visiting youth clubs that are happening in Stocksbridge which I think is tremendous. They've already suggested that they want to do that sort of thing. Um, the first thing they told us they wanted was a tuck shop, and they were very specific about what Haribo's they wanted. And, and, I mean, I can't do tanktastics, but we've got a little tuck shop that they wanted to get there. So, um, I guess the second big priority that we have around community uh, is, is running community events, events for the local community and getting volunteers involved in that. Um, we have a tremendous suite of projects that are going on called Mind, Body and Soil, which are on our old allotment and garden space. We've got about an acre and a half of gardens and allotments. Um, I tried some of our high green development chutney for the first time last week, which was made by one of our trustees. It was fantastic from the stuff that they've grown on the allotment this summer. Um, and we have a group of uh, volunteers who suffer from PTSD, ex-military servicemen who are working on... Um, on the allotment there, as well as some of our regular volunteers. Some of you will know John Housley and the work that he's done. John's uh, got a group of people that are working down there, and they do some, some great stuff. So we're, we're always looking for opportunities to develop that space. We've built a, um, a rainwater collection roof that should collect all the rainwater that we need for the site for, the, for a year. 
Um, we've, we've built that. Um, and the third priority is around education. We have, you will, most of you will know the site as being the old Pacers campus. Pacers school leave us in October, at half term, they move to their new premises in Thorncliffe. We're really sad to see them go, they're really sad to be leaving. We have a, personally have a great working relationship with the people there and it will, missing the, we will miss the young people being on site. But we will still have a, an outstanding rating, rated nursery. Um, sites visited by hundreds of people every day. We also have High Green Gymnastics that does tremendous work coaching young people from all over South Yorkshire actually. Um, so the, the, the education side of it, we know that we, we need to focus on educating our staff, the people of High Green, so we're running free for them to use courses on things like CPR, um, diet, diet and nutrition, um, how to cook, um, how to live on a budget, these types of things, along with partner organisations that are helping us to reach out into all sorts of different areas like cross-stitch and macrame and stuff I really don't know how to do. But um, m My mum runs an art class there. Um, I'm just trying to give you a sense of how wide across the community in the last 12, 18 months we've managed to reach. Um, and that was from a pretty much standing start um, after COVID. What that tells me is, I guess what I've always known growing up in Chopertown is that if there's something there, the people locally will gravitate towards it and will try and use it. And we're now inundated with um, approaches from, not just from uh, volunteers and local um, residents, but also from organisations who want to work there, support what we're doing. Um, the health visitors want to try and set up running health clinics there. Um, we have hot desk facilities which some of the council officers use and Louise comes and spends some time pinches some of our free Wi-Fi but that's fine. Um, so yeah, just an opportunity really to come and talk to you and, and share some of the things that we're doing. We've got a lot of um, really exciting plans for next year. I'm delighted to say that the City Council have written to us and said they share our, our long-term view for the site which is tremendous that there will be a long-term community use for the site as well. Um, we, will, we'll, we are looking to try and support the council with the transport challenge. We have a very advanced plan to run a circular bus service free uh, point of use from High Green down to Chapel Town into Burn Cross and back calling all the doctor surgeries and stuff like that. We think we've got the funding for that already and we think we've got volunteers who can help us to do that. So it won't be quite the 135 or the 61, or, but it will help. Um, so that's it really. I just wanted to take the opportunity to introduce myself and talk to you about what's going on there and then take any questions that you might have about what we're doing. Thank, thanks very much, Chris. Thank you very much. Is there anyone? Councillors? Okay. Yes, thank, thanks for coming along and um, I've been um, following the email correspondence mm. about the, the ongoing issue of the lease mm. um, and, and I, what I, I just wanted to raise that and I feel it, it might be useful for, for you to kind of um, outline for the benefit of members of the public who have come along and for the, and for the public record of the meeting mm. uh, just to kind of set out what the, what the, the arrangements have been uh, and the aspirations for that going forward. And I, I would just like to suggest through you, Chair, that before we conclude this part of the meeting, that I would like to um, propose that we, as a committee of the Council, should uh, make a, a resolution uh, giving some very clear uh, political support uh, to give some direction to the officers of the Council to encourage them to use all of the powers within the legal framework uh, to, to bring this to a satisfactory resolution to be able to uh, safeguard the continuing uh, work of the trust. Um, so I, I, it might, through you, Chair, I, I would like to invite, if you want to outline to people what the, what the setup is with the lease, uh, and, and then I'd like to make a proposal on a, on a resolution, Chair. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Councillor. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd happily do that. The, when um, High Green Development Trust was formed, uh, a lease was, was granted at a peppercorn rent, so hardly anything, a year, to the Trust, provided that the Trust um, continued to maintain the site and developed it for community use. 
Um, we know that the city is short on its special educational needs provision and there's been an examination of sites across the city to try and identify suitable school sites. Well, we have a school, so we always knew we would be one of those sites that the city would look at. And I think they have identified it as a really suitable site for a school. That's hardly surprising given that we have one. Um, what we are really keen to do is while those plans develop, and they will take time, they might take six or seven years for those plans to develop, is that we continue to work with the city on the development of that site. So, it, so what we retain is education, community and care on that site. And I think it, it's a big enough site for us to be able to do that. Um, we genuinely support the aspirations of the city in trying to improve special educational needs. It's a subject close to our heart as it is to everybody's. And we are, we're really confident that there's a, a way that we can get that blended activity on the site that achieves everybody's aims. What we definitely don't want to do is be in a situation where um, we're just rolling on with a short-term lease that means we can't develop the site the way we need to develop it and we can't attract organisations that we want to attract. Um, because if any organisation, charity or otherwise, wants to come and, and, uh, and occupy the site, they need some security themselves. So we just need, in that vacuum between not having a firm plan and where we are today, which is about four or five years, We'd just like to see the council, um, city council, back our aspirations and give us a lease that allows us to work with them on, in, through that period. Does that, does that help, Craig? There. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Chair. I'll get used to this eventually. Um, I fully endorse the sentiment of that resolution, but I'm a bit nervous to be voting on resolutions without proper briefing papers. So I'm not, I'm not dismissing it at all. Please don't take that. But it's got to be done correctly. Um, something similar to Richard. I mean, I, I fully endorse that. But some of us as councillors, it's not in our area. And we've heard of the development trust, but not in much detail. And what you've told us tonight is absolutely amazing. Uh, and I, I gather from what you're saying that what you need is the extension of the lease. Yes. Well, obviously, as a community assembly, that's not in our power to extend a lease. But um, can I ask, Chair, that we have some more information given to members so that we... Cause my instinct is I want to support this, um, but it's not in our power to give and I'd like two things. One, more information. And two, the knowledge of where we should refer this and how we could do what Craig's asked for. Uh, and then we can possibly do it in a way that will give you the support you need. Whereas if we just pass a motion there that we can't back up, we're not doing anybody any good really, Craig. We need the information. If we've got the information and we can find out how to do it, then we can start on that journey. Does that uh, make sense? No, that, that, it certainly it, it does make sense to me. I'm, I'm grateful for your verbal support. I, and, and actually, I think you know, the sentiment is really, is really helpful. I'm also really confident that once all of the areas of the City Council understand what we're doing, we'll, we'll get there. I, I really do believe we will, because I, I think anybody that comes and looks at what we're doing on the site now and all the things that are there is going to support us. Um, but I think we just have to break through some of that early bits of red tape when you're in a negotiation between a charity and a local council and a bit of distance between those two in the past. So I'm, I'm confident that we'll get there, but any support you can give will be obviously gratefully received. And we, you know, we, we, we welcome um, you to come and hold a meeting at, at, at the Trust. We've got a, we've got a whole bigger than this. Um, so Good idea, Chair. Have a meeting there. And we'll show you around. Maybe yeah. even make you a cup of tea. Does anyone else want to come in? Richard again, go on. Well, we have one. Sorry, I'm not using this verbal. Um, if you prepare to, please invite me and I'll come and have a look in my role Absolutely. in the community parts of leisure. I'll, I'll, I'll write to you, Councillor, no you. problem. Yeah. And if I come, I'll come with him as well. If I can, I'll come with as well. Great, I'll write to him. Because I'd Thank really you. be interested in seeing it. Yeah, lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I think... Um, to try and move to a conclusion, I think certainly the West Ecclesfield councillors, the three West Ecclesfield, 
have been supportive of you mm. all the way through Very. and yes. I think we are backed up now from the rest of this committee I'm not sure um, if a resolution will help but if need be we can, we can take it further uh, and bring it back but I think if we can make it clear in the minutes of this meeting that we fully support the ongoing activities uh, both short term and medium term of the development trust Thank you, uh, and, and, and certainly as councillors and the like mm. fully support it uh, and, and, and take it there if we need to move it forward to a resolution uh, that would have to be I think placed on the next agenda of the next meeting if we need to go that far but hopefully the lease will be sorted by then and, and we're moving on fingers crossed I can be persuasive when I need to be. Yes. Is that okay? Yeah, just, just to clarify, Chair, my, my proposal wasn't to, um, to, to make a, uh, a suggested resolution to the situation, but actually was that we should resolve as a committee that we, as elected members, are very clear um, of the benefits that the Trust's utilisation of that lease has for the communities, because my understanding is that one of the key legal factors about whether or not a local authority can award uh, a peppercorn type lease at less than commercial uh, value of land to community groups hinges on whether or not the council believes that such a uh, less commercial arrangement has very clear and tangible uh, educational community, mm, social absolutely. and economic benefits. And I, I certainly think we might, as, as elected members, not know what the legal solution is going to be to get you there, but I definitely think that we could resolve that we're clear as a local area committee of the, the value uh, and the, the benefit that your occupancy of that lease brings. That, that was the extent of, uh, of my proposed resolution. And it, it seems as if there is a consensus. I think so. And we, we are working on a, uh, a report that documents the social outcomes of the work that we do. So, and, and they're significant. Um, yeah. Do you want to come in more? Thanks, Chair. Um, yes, I think, I think we agree we're supportive, very supportive of what I agree the government trusts are doing. I think at this time, now that they're in a negotiation with the Council, um, and things are moving forward, I think we should allow that to continue its course. And if need be, if we need more support down those negotiations, if you feel that you need to come back to us, then certainly do. But for this moment in time, my view is carry on, we'll type things in the right way. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. I, I think over the, over, certainly over the last few years and moving on, I've been involved with this for some 20 years now. Uh, back, back, back and forwards, but I think the, the current position we're in now is, is moving forward. It's clear. Um, we've got a good, got a good team uh, with, the, with the trustees uh, and yourself as, 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 as lead. So I think it, it's, it's really good and positive. I think also that the particular site where it is, um, it complements uh, the leisure centre next door and St George's. So, so up there we've got a really wonderful uh, community asset. Resource. Yeah, re really good. But thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. I think you for making it clear in the, the notes that the, 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 the LAC and the committee are fully supportive of, uh, of the High Green Trust. Please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. appreciate that. Thank you. Just, just, to, just to be absolutely clear, Chair, I hear what colleagues are saying, that there isn't a will to, to move to a resolution, so I, I withdraw uh, that proposal. Thank you. That sort of concludes the meeting. Um, our next meeting is at uh, Forge Valley School in Stannington on Wednesday the 18th of January at 6pm. Uh, during January and February there will be a public consultation that commences with a local plan. It actually commences on the 9th of January and so no doubt at that particular meeting will be have as an agenda item. Uh, the, the local plan and the consultation hopefully with members of the team that put the plan together uh, so I bid you all a farewell and good night and really thank you for coming I think the councillors will be around 
for a few minutes if you want to chat to people on any issues that you want to and uh, we, we'd be more than welcome to chat, to chat with you. Thank you very much. Thank you.